This is for Algebra 2, Lesson 3 on Scientific Notation. And Scientific Notation is used for really large numbers, such as these, or really small numbers, such as these. Okay, so this is pretty simple. And what you want to do is you always want to place the decimal one place after your first non-zero number. Non-zero means it's not a zero. So if you don't see a decimal, which you don't hear, it's here. Okay? And I want my decimal to be right here. So the way you're going to write this is 8.5 times 10 to that. And count how many places you moved your decimal. You moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that would be times 10 to the 7th. And let me just show you really quick why that works. Think about a really simple number like 300. Okay? If I was going to write this in scientific notation, do you see how the decimal should go right there? Because it always goes one place after the first non-zero number. So I need my decimal right there. So I would write this as 3.0. You don't even have to write the O's and zeros, I should say, if you don't want to. Times 10, and notice it was here, and I moved it over two places. This works. Think about it. 10 squared is 100, and 3 times 100 is indeed 300. So that is why that works. So like 10 to the 7th is a 1 with 7 zeros after it. Huge number. But when you would multiply that times 8.5, you would get back exactly what you started with. All right. So how do you write this in scientific notation? My decimal is way over here. If you don't see it, it's way at the end. I want to move my decimal right here. Okay. There should only be one place right there. So it's going to be 9.73. I can just drop off all these zeros, they don't really matter, times 10, and then just figure out how many places you moved it. You moved it all the way from here to here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You moved it 12 places. Okay? What if you have a tiny little number? Well, you want your decimal to be one place after the first non-zero number. So I want it to be 4.31. Now, I don't want this number to get really big. I want it to be small. So notice I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4. I moved it 4 places, but you're going to do 10 to the negative 4. Okay? Now, let me show you on a simple one why that works. Think about this. That's a simple little number. You can read that. That's the same thing as 5 one hundredths. Okay? Hopefully everybody realizes that. Okay, but if I was going to put this in scientific notation, I'd want to move my decimal over two places. And notice I moved my decimal two places, so it's going to be to the negative two, because I want my number to be really small. If this was a positive exponent, it would make my number really big. Now remember how you do negative exponents. I could write this like this, 1 over 10 squared. Remember how you get rid of negative exponents, which is the same thing as... 1 over 100. Well, 5 times 1 over 100 is 5 one hundredths. So it's the same thing. So it does work. Okay, let's try this one. I want my decimal to be right there. So 4.31, and I needed to move it one more spot, so it's just to the negative 1. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Now, you might look at this value, and you might think, it's in scientific notation, and it kind of is, but it's not correct. What's wrong with it? Well, the decimal should be right there, okay? I should be writing this as 8.24. The problem is, once I start moving this decimal around, it's going to affect my exponent. So you have to think. This is where you really have to think. Think about what this is telling you to do. It's telling you to take this decimal right here, and it's wanting you to march it one, two, three, four places over. Well, if now I back up my decimal one more place, now instead of moving just four, now I'm going to have to move another one. So it's going to have to be times 10 to the fifth. Okay? Look at this one. My decimal should be right here, okay, after the, the non-zero number. So it should be written as an 8. If you want to write an 8.0, you can. Obviously, if I move my decimal, it affects my exponent. So I want you to think about this, okay? It's telling you to move this decimal five places. So if you want to think about it, we're going to go over this way, five places. Well, if all of a sudden I move my decimal right here, do you see I'm already partially the way there? 
So now instead of having to move it five, if I move my decimal right here, now I only have to move it three to get to the same spot. So one way you can do that, if that's really hard for you to see, is you can make, you know, five little tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. But if you moved your decimal here, you can see you only had three left. Okay? Now, what about something like this? Again, it's very similar to this one, but this I had a positive four, and this one I threw in a negative four. How does it affect it? Well, your decimal still needs to go right here after the non-zero number, so I can at least get that part right. If you move your decimal, it's going to affect your exponent. Well, think about what this is wanting you to do. It's wanting you to take this decimal and move it to the left, because it makes it smaller, four places. So you're going to go one, two, three, four is what you're doing, okay? But if you're going to move it right there, do you see that now you only have to move it three? So you want that to be a negative three. Let's try one more here. This one looks just like this one, but instead of making it a positive five, I made it a negative five to see what the difference is. My decimal should always be right after the first non-zero number. So it's going to be just a boring 8. And again, if you want to write 8.0, that's fine. 8, 8.0, it's all the same thing. If I move my decimal, it's going to affect my exponent. So think about what this wanted me to do. It wanted me to move it this way five places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But I backed it up two more. So now instead of just going 5, I have to go 7. So that is the hardest part about scientific notation. It's just moving that decimal back and forth. Okay, so what does it want you to do on your homework? I want you to use scientific notation. And so if you have something like this, this is actually number 8 from 3A, and it says, well, I'm just going to point to it. It looks like this. Okay, even if you can put this in your calculator, I first want you to put it in scientific notation. So my decimal is going to go right after the 1. So I'm going to write that as... 1.8 times 10 to the, let's see, how many places do I have to move that? 3, 6, 9. So I'm going to make it 1.8 times 10 to the 9th. I'm probably going to put that in parentheses. And put this one in scientific notation. I want my decimal to be right there between the 2 and the 4. So it's going to be 2.4. 2.4 times 10. And how many places did you move your decimal? Looks like you went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, here's where you're going to learn your tricks of multiplication. Remember, you can multiply in any order you want, and you get the same answer. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I multiply this in order, I get 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. But notice, I could do this. I could say 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 4 times 6 is 24. So I still get 24. Or I could say 4 times 3 is 12, and 1 times 2 is 2, and 12 times 2 is 24. You can, oh gosh, I can do it this way. 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 8 is 24. It just doesn't matter what order you multiply it in. So what I want you to do is multiply these numbers together first. And that's simple, because you know that when you multiply something together where you have the same base, you simply add your exponents. Well, 9 plus 6 is 15. Okay, and then in your calculator, hit this. What is 1.8 times 2.4? And yeah, this is going to be horrible, but I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to go get one real quick. So here, you get to go walk to my house. Let's hope this calculator works. Oh, padoodle, it doesn't. Let's get this calculator. Hopefully this one will work. Nothing wrong with little calculators. So we took 1.8 times 2.4, that's what I get for not being prepared, and it looks like it's 4.32. So your answer is 4.32. Just make sure, times 10 to the 15th, make sure that your decimal's in the right spot. If it's not, you're going to have to move it, okay? All right, let's try one other one here. <clears throat> um, let's try number 7. And again, I'm still on 3A. And I'm just going to write this down. It looks like this, 0 0.098. And yes, you can hit this in your calculator, but I want you to practice putting it in scientific notation first. So we're going to put my decimal right here, right after the 9. Right here, it's right here. So I'm going to write this as 9.8. It's a little number, 
you know, if I make this a positive exponent, it's going to make it a huge number. So notice I moved it two places, so it should be to the negative 2. Okay, my decimal is way over here. I need to move it after the 6. I moved it three places. It's a little number, so I want a negative exponent. Okay, take this. Hit this in your calculator. Just take your boring numbers, 9.8 times 6. I'm doing that real quick in my calculator. And I get 58.8 times 10. And remember, you can add your exponents. So that's going to be a negative 5. Now, you would be tempted to say, woohoo, I'm done. But you're not. Because it's not totally correct. Because your decimal should be right there after the 5. So it should be 5.88. And now you've got to think about how that affected your decimal. Think about this. It's a negative. So it's making your number smaller. So it's going to go this way, five places. One, two, three, four, five. But if you move your decimal right here, now you only have to go four. So that's your answer. Now we try one more where you divide, and we're going to call it good. And I may, it may just stop right in the middle because you can only, whoops, I don't want to do that, you can only do so much here. But let's try number 11, and it looks like this, 00042 all over 0 0.0006. Okay, first put in scientific notation. I want my decimal right after the 4. It looks like I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4. This is going to be a 6, and I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, this is a little weird. I didn't mean to do that. Did I write it down right? Yeah, weird. Wait a minute. I added too many zeros. 1, 2, 3. I'm looking in your book. Maybe I didn't. Okay, who cares? We're going to leave it like what I had it. One, two, three, four. You know what? I was supposed to have another one right in here, which is going to make it to the negative five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, look in your book. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. First of all, divide this. 4.2 divided by 6. So I'm going to do that in my calculator. And that's 0 0.7. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You know that when you divide, you subtract exponents. So think about this. You have a negative 4 minus a negative 5. And a minus and a minus makes it plus. So you're going to have negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. Okay? So you can do it that way. Or because you have negative exponents, you could swap this. This guy's negative, so you could put him on the top. This guy's negative, so you could put him on the bottom. Either way, you can see you have more tens on the top. How many more? One. Okay? Now, this is not in correct scientific notation. It should technically be right here. But, you know, this is kind of a weird one. But 0.7 times 10 is just going to be 7 anyway. So give it a whirl. See how you do.